You there? I can't hear you. Bam! There you go. How's it going? Yeah. Fell into the the fatal Zoom category of wait, did we there you there? Un there unmute. <laughs> there we go. That's a better view. You like that? Yeah. That's yeah, there you go. How's it going, man? Good, man. How you been? <coughs> better than I've ever been, really. Yeah, I mean, congratulations on the sobriety. We'll get to that yeah, later. Yeah, really. yeah. But, uh, who, Concrete, you, you're you a, what kind of rapper are you? Uh, we call our style horror crunk. It's like a, a horror, mixture of horrorcore and crunk music. Uh, it's like uh, Freddy Krueger and... Jason Voorhees and, and fucking Leatherface, John Eastside Boys, fucking Gangsta Boo, and like everybody ran a train on Gangsta Boo, and <laughs> Mafia, and, <coughs> and you know, fucking, fucking ICP and Flatliners all jumped in in the one fucking just big giant fucking train. And uh, <laughs> one big giant. Don't train. just expect the guys to boo. I just like you know. Just... <laughs> <laughs> she just it's happened to be the the female that came to mind, right? Uh, uh, you know, because she's crunk, <laughs> right? <sighs> so how did that come about? That sound, that that genre. Well, that was a good question. Um, because I mean, <clears throat> everybody knows well, horror core. But horror crunk is kind of, I mean, it's not new, but it's a, it's a smaller demographic, I guess you could say. Uh, Bloodshot, basically, he started off, uh, he was uh, really into that Dirty South kind of music. Uh, he was in the, like, uh, he was a big 3-6 Mafia fan. And, okay. Uh, big fan of No Limit. You know, they always had all those different CDs <laughs> coming out with those yeah. cool covers. And they were all kind of similar. A lot all of those them. Photoshop covers. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, but like it was a big deal back then, and he was like, he said he was collecting them. They were like baseball cards to him. <laughs> I did not know that about him. Yeah, you know, believe it or not, Troy is a big. He was a big baseball card collector too. He had a huge baseball card collection back in the day. I'm gonna have like, to I talk to him about room. that. I've been in his room at his mom's house, and I've seen it. I did not know that. I, I didn't even know he collected the CD cases either. <clears throat> yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. Um, you know, we had a lot of deep fucking, you know, marijuana-induced conversations and <laughs> deep oh, marijuana. I know how those go. <laughs> oh, you've been there, <laughs> boom. I, I don't remember. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. No, uh, but he, um, he smoked. Well, you know, while we were smoking, like you know, he, you know, he'd tell me about like, yeah. He, he just he was a he just loved no limit. He he he'd collect them like you know he even refer you know it's like collecting Pokemon you know like, right. He had to have all of them, and so <laughs> uh, I I kind of you know um, we were in a, originally started off as a group called Doomsday Riders. Uh huh. Yeah, you know, and then we stuck with that until you know the actual real Doomsday Productions, uh, you know. Their lawyer hit him up with a, you know, cease and the cease note, and so he changed the name. <laughs> I don't know what we're thinking. We're just kids, you know. We're just kids, right? But hey, I mean, at least you were making some kind of noise to at least get that. Yeah, we were new adults, and um, when we first met, you know, uh, my friend Alan Thomas introduced me to Bloodshot and Troy Bloodshot, uh -huh. but uh, Alan Thomas, whose stage name was Junior E at the time, we formed a little group of three, uh, and. Uh, Alan was a friend of my brother's that I actually didn't like at the time because my brother was in really rebellious. I was in like a hardcore Christian phase and I was a band geek in high school. And so, <laughs> so I didn't like my brother and his fucking devil worshiping friends smoking meth in our fucking garage. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll 
we'll get into that because I was going to ask you about your family like, too. Kurt Cobain and yeah, well, I'm talking <laughs> about way back, back when I was a fucking like straight edge. And uh, you know, he introduced me to Alan, and uh, me and Alan, like, Alan stopped doing that shit, and we started. But he like still liked to drink, and we started drinking a lot together, and we started freestyling. I right. lost, um, and um, I remember seeing you know, like, a couple of my friends we were hanging out with. They were freestyling, and I remember listening to them. Like, hey, I could do that. I wonder if I could do that, you know? And just uh, yeah. We ran, you know, and then eventually he introduced me to Bloodshot and he introduced me to Troy and said he raps too. And we started talking. He was in the Three Six Mafia. I was more of a juggalo. Like Alan introduced me to ICP. My first song I ever heard was Willie Bubba. And, <laughs> I remember uh, that song. Yeah. I mean, before that, I listened to some West Coast rap and I listened to Tori's B.I.G. too and shit. And, but like nothing really, really, really got me going until I heard that fucking song. It was so fucking funny. And yeah, and Troy was not. Yeah, Troy's not a juggalo at all. Like he just, uh, it, and it took a while before he mentioned to me and like made it clear to me like what he was into. And I just liked the high energy stuff. Like so, I got into it too. Uh, so, I guess that's more of a question to ask him. If he didn't like that, how do you kind of get into horrorcore music? Was it Three Six Mafia? Probably. Yeah, yeah, he he liked the original Three Six Mafia, which was really dark, like right. the original Triple Six Mafia shit. Yeah, because I remember we've had some talks about Three Six Mafia. It's, I, I I don't know. It's like uh, Troy went under this name Reasons back in the day, and he had more lighthearted. He just liked to talk about smoking weed and shit. And <laughs> but he he still like he still went pretty hard. But like we met, like that's what we wanted to do with some fucking wicked shit. So he kind of joined in. I, I, he might have a different point of view on his side of the story. I don't know. Just where it fell, right? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> let's go back. You said you had a brother. How many do you have? Just one or? Oh, um, I have one. His name is okay. Daniel. And we're um, 22 months older than he is. He, uh, he is currently in medical school right now over out by Yakima, Washington, somewhere, somewhere on the eastern side of Washington. So, and you said, was he really smoking meth or was that just a joke? Oh, yeah, but I mean, he was like, he was like a, you know, he was just a teenager experiment. Teenager, you know? right. Yeah. I, did, I didn't start fucking up until it was like going to be on my permanent record. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you know what? Now I think is the time I'll start to have fun. <laughs> like, like, he got it out of his system before, like, you know, he got real bad, you know, like, he got it out of his system when he was still a minor. So you're pretty. So you're, I guess, a pretty good kid in school. Kind of. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, my parents divorced when I was ten, and my brother was a younger brother, so he took it pretty hard. So I mean, he just rebelled right away. Okay. I was a little older, so you know, I just <clears throat> kind of tucked it away and pressed on. But yeah, so he he kind of rebelled really young and kind of got over that shit real quick. Well, that's good that he got over it quick. I should have got out of my system right away too. Like, <laughs> didn't think about it. Uh, I was in. I was too into music. Okay. Do you remember what the first CD was you bought? Uh, not exactly. But the first one that comes to mind is the Doors' Greatest Hits album. I really like the Doors. I actually used to listen to oldies a lot. Um, uh, mine was Ghostbusters two. Soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah, I like soundtracks too. Like that that's why I'm saying I don't know because like before that I really like soundtracks. I listen to classical music a lot. I played the baritone horn or the euphonium. It's like a small version of a tuba. Okay, I was just about same, to ask. <laughs> same range as the trombone. That was my favorite instrument when I when I was in high school and stuff. And well, basically from fifth grade on. Like I started off on the trumpet in fifth grade and then like one day my lips grew a little too big and I fucking couldn't play it. <laughs> also, I couldn't get any air out of that thing, which is no mm -hmm. excuse because Louis, you know, Louis Armstrong, obviously, right. So was, but it just I couldn't, and they just it was taking me too long. And the teacher just had somebody hand me a baritone, and boom, it was fine again. I don't know why I was able to play it before, and then all of a sudden just couldn't. It was just weird. It uh, happens sometimes. I mean. Yeah, I wanted to play that. In, I wanted to play it professionally, 
And I ended up finding out from a private instructor, he pointed out that I never separate my notes with my tongue. Like when you're supposed to use your tongue to separate notes. And I, did I, I, never did that. That. I would just stop buzzing my lips, something weird. Like, and yeah. And because I wasn't doing that, it just made it to where, you know, I could never really be a professional musician. And he was just being real with me. And then when I was trying to fix it, after all those years of thinking I was doing it the right way, I just, I just kind of gave up. So how many years was all those years? Fifth grade to senior year. Uh, okay, know, so like that's quite. Math. It's about seven years. About. That's a good Six time. Seven years. Yeah. Almost. Pretty much your, almost your school career. I can't even picture myself playing one of those things now. It's kind of nasty. <laughs> Why do you say that? <laughs> I mean, you never know. <laughs> I took up the guitar like for a while. I still I play the guitar things. for a little bit. Yeah. Was, fuck, who's got time to master that shit, though? It's like, fuck. Right. I mean, it with was. all the stuff you're doing, being a director, learning video, video, blah, blah, blah. Videography. <laughs> I don't know why that was a tongue twister. <laughs> but, uh, is this live, by the way? Like, can no. I share this link? What? No, this no, it's just pre-recorded. Okay, yeah. just check. I was going to share the link, but never mind. You can send me the link. I'll send it, and I'll put it in the description. Where the hell were we? It's a good question. Uh, so, you talked about your... You're, uh, oh, we were talking about you blowing a trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> and the back You're getting of the down onto some trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing the baritone horn. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I think, oh, we reached the end of that story. Oh, okay. Uh, basically. And then uh, not too long after that, I, I started drinking. Like, if it wasn't for alcohol, uh, uh, concrete would not exist. So, Why do you say that? More power to alcohol. I'm just gonna say. Well, <laughs> that's a, I was gonna say that's kind of a hard thing to say right at the moment. I wouldn't have wanted to be a hardcore rapper with my fucking fancy upbringing. My dad's a fucking doctor and shit. Like I wouldn't have wanted to do this shit. Like unless I was drunk. Like seriously. Like the first time I freestyled, I was drunk as shit. Like me and my like. I mean, I. So I was, in other I, words. You pretty much had to uh, to get the balls up to actually get up and do it. You had to be drunk. Yeah, I, yeah. I, my life was consumed by fear, which is another uh, another thing that contributed to my alcoholism. My my life was you know like consumed by fear, and I used alcohol to you know muffle that fear. Like I uh, I never got laid in high school, and like. And lose my virginity until I was 19, you know, and because the guy my friends would laugh at because of that shit and whatever. And, you know, because, you know, I, my life was consumed by fear. It can cripple people, fear. Can. I, yeah, I, I created concrete to conquer some of that fear. Like, how'd, uh, the, how'd that work out? I mean, no, it helped. It did. It really did. Like, uh, I kind of wish sometimes, like, I, I think a lot of artists that get really, really big are the, you know, the ones that are like really real and down to earth that aren't afraid to tell you who they really are. Like, I, like I'm going back and I'm listening to artists that pull up back in the day and they're talking about their real life shit. Some people, I mean, like if I was just to have made songs back in the day about like, if I was brave enough to do songs about like, like back in the day about like, I'm a loser. I can't get laid in high school. You know, you know how many fucking, like, I think I'm the only kid. That had trouble getting laid in high school. Like, there's a bunch of other kids that couldn't get laid in high school. They couldn't listen to that shit and, like, related to it. Yeah, I'm sure there's a bunch of kids. Unfortunately, I lost mine when I was 15. So. <laughs> Fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Damn. I can't believe it. Some just chick just pity fucked me. <laughs> I think Alan, the guy who introduced me to Troy, was like 14 or 15. Troy told me he was four years old. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, never mind. Like, <laughs> like, like, with, like, with a girl his own age, too. Like, <laughs> like, how the fuck? I don't fucking know. Anyways, <laughs> like, um, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Yeah. Okay. 
that link you sent me, the song, that's actually yeah. really good. I just listened to it while I was getting ready. You never heard that before? No, I didn't hear that, that one before. That's old school concrete, actually. I just released, I just put it on Spotify, right? But it's like, okay, it's from my first album. Back to okay. hell. I, I just, I just, you know, sometimes I try to release a song every week. I, I'm kind of like, I, I'm really late on this week's song, actually. But like, TikTok. Yeah, I mean, I was supposed to do, I was supposed to upload that last <laughs> night. But I try to do every week. I missed a week, like the week before last week. Uh, but I'm usually pretty consistent now. So but, let's uh, go back to the, uh, the, the drinking. How long did you, was it before? How long was it that you were drinking? And was it just drinking that you did? I started at night. I st well, yeah, I mean, I've had my first drink probably at 12. Like, my stepmom gave, like, let me drink her wine. And, I, and you know, typical, I, I drank till I got sick and wanted to throw up. Like, <laughs> and then she laughed at me or whatever. That just happened once. And then, like, 18, I tried, I tried drinking beer at a party with these Marines. And uh, I didn't, I remember I didn't like it. And then 19, I kind of just started forcing myself to drink it, trying to fit in. Uh, and then when I realized how much I loved alcohol, like that's when me and Alan started hanging out. Like, <laughs> and uh, we'd go to parties, random keggers, and uh, drink all the time. And one day we were drinking uh, Old Crow whiskey. Like, I've heard of that. Yeah. I'm a barrel shit. And <laughs> we basically drank two fists of that in one night. We were at a party. It was like the first night I ever, I ever drove drunk. I mean, and, you know, he had just gotten me into ICP and stuff, and I'm listening to that shit. And he starts spreading me CDs and Nottis, and I'm starting to hear this even crazier shit. You know, Nottis and the House of Crazies. Because uh, at the time, you know, this is like early 2000s or 99. 1999 and uh alan's dad owns a computer fucking business like his dad pretty much just opened up his computer business they're fucking huge now uh All right and so he works on computers for a living so he knows a lot about computers so he knew how to find and download music before anybody else did so he would download music and burn me CDs of all this random shit and i listened to this shit and i just loved it and it just made me want to let out aggression too and um uh, but anyways, back to this party, we pretty much just killed a fifth of Old Crow, and he tells me, come on, Aaron, let's, you know, let's go drive, let's go drive back to your house. Let's go back to your house. I'm like, let's get out of here. I'm like, but we drank, and I just remember, like, conquering my, my fear of fucking not, you know, drinking and driving, which I shouldn't have done, of course, but then we're driving down these back roads, and, and I'm just like, woo, I'm like, holy shit, and like, we, we finally... I ended up having a lot of fun. It's just weird. And then we stopped and we went for a walk and we drank a whole nother fifth of Old Crow. And we were just so drunk and we were walking down to the store to buy burritos. <laughs> and we're, As one we're, does when they're drunk. We're stealing mail from people's mailboxes. Like, it's fucked up. And we're freestyling the whole way down there. Like, Alan starts rapping and just making up shit. And I start rapping and making up shit. And... You know, the time we called ourselves the East Side Double Threat EDT, so we're kind of doing like you know the inner city posse kind of style thing. Like that, that that's how we started off, right? Right. Rapping about how much we don't give a fuck about nothing and shit, and just just totally a different different fucking side of me coming out, right? And uh, the rest is pretty much history. Eventually, he introduced me to Troy, and then Troy started showing us how to record. Or bloodshot, you know, he started showing uh -huh. us how to record. We we started off recording at his mom's house. He lived at his mom's house and she ran a daycare downstairs. I used to call it daycare wow. studios. So we go <laughs> we go record on her computer in her daycare facility downstairs. We're like whenever they go out in their boat, like it would just have to be random because it would be like every other weekend they would just decide to go out on a boat. And when I go out you know boat, what? Like, that what record? That sounds like a cool name. Daycare studios? That's what I called it, yeah. Like, <laughs> good. Uh, and I think it was more of a name I developed shortly after we, you know, after you know they moved and we they st we stopped recording down there. Right. Um, 
got my own equipment and we used to record a little radio like like the bloodshot red eyes album that uh-huh. you can find on audio mac dot com um that was basically the first bloodshot album ever and i was on it under the name winslow and we all yeah wow. we started recording that um uh, sorry yeah we we started and we recorded that all on like a cheap little plastic radio shack mike right yeah Stood up like a limp dick, like this little fucking, <laughs> like that, this little thin. You little... know what? I think I now that you say that, I kind of know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> little curved little microphone on this little platform, like right. And you know, we we put the headphones on, and uh, we didn't know how to use the multi-track recorder, so we would like play the beat on a different program with the button, uh-huh. and then we grab to the beat, and then we'd have to go like copy it. And, paste it onto the beat like and undo it several times until we finally placed it right on beat and we literally spent all this time to do that backups and everything like we totally didn't know what we were doing and that's that's how he put that whole fucking album together (laughs) 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 that's crazy uh, just i mean you must have taken hours upon hours just doing that yeah, it still took hours upon hours once we figured out how to do it right. One day, like years later, Troy hits me up and he's just like, you know what I just realized? Hit that little button up there in the corner. What the fuck is this? It's the multi-track recorder. We could have done this the whole time. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's always something like that. You always learn years later that it's like, oh, there's an easier way. Yeah. And, and Troy, like, made a name for himself online. I was struggling, like, you know, getting kicked. You know, parent, mom moved out of town and house got sold. And so I'm just kind of struggling. And this is part of the alcoholism thing where I don't realize that my life is unmanageable or that it's the reason my life is unmanageable. I think everybody's fucking my shit up. Like, you know, and the whole time I am, you know. Now, plus, it's hard to get a job because I'm a young punk kid and. Right. Couldn't keep one. I'd drink on the job. I <clears throat> do all kinds of fucked up shit. Anyways, like, so I was kind of struggling in and out of homelessness. I wasn't able to go online. I didn't have internet access. Troy was online uh, going on horrorcore.com and all these old sites. Back when it was easy to promote your music, you know, all these other sites. Now everybody's <laughs> promoting on these social media sites that are controlling and, you know, want you to pay for advertising and shit. And, uh, all right. Back when it was easy to promote yourself for free, like at least horrorcore and um, for yeah. Back when horrorcore and kill music was out, and he made a name for himself, and I was also in and out of jail. It's part of why he he one day suggested the name when I wanted to change it. Yeah, why Winslow? Because Alan suggested it, but Alan never, never took music serious. He was just cracking jokes, like. He was thinking, I didn't realize, I'm kind of dumb. I didn't realize he was thinking Carl Winslow from the fucking <laughs> <laughs> Family Matters or some shit. Or I thought he was, you know, or he was naming me. There was a Winslow, Washington, like right by uh, Baybridge Island, not too far from us, too. I don't know. He just suggested the name. I, I'm bad with names, basically. I never really came up with my own name. Okay. But, uh, and Troy's the one who came up with blood or he concrete? Came up with concrete. Yeah. Later on, I decided to change it. Uh, so how did that come about? He basically said, you know, concrete he said separate the con and Crete with a hyphen in the middle, so con can stand for convict or something. Because I was always in trouble at the time. Okay. I had never been to prison. I still haven't been to prison to this day. And, and you know, I kind of told him at first, like, I don't know. People are probably gonna call me out on that. It, it, you know, like, I don't know. Once again, fear. <laughs> I'm like, exactly. I'm like, I don't know about that. But then, like, like two days later, I got caught shoplifting at a Safeway. Like, got tackled down by the staff, and they they threw me in the you know back of a cop car, took me to jail. And uh, the jail was it's the old fucking Kitsap County Jail, and it's so packed that I had to sleep on a little shitty mattress on the concrete floor. And at that point, I'm just like. Fuck this. I guess it was meant to be. Wrote my first song was Concrete. 
Uh, your first song was Concrete? No, I wrote my first oh, okay. song as Concrete. Uh, first song was called Straight to the Nut House, which never got released. I, I, I don't even know where it is anymore. But uh, one of the but one song one of those first two songs I wrote in there. Uh, the other one was Making Bacon, the original version of Making Bacon. Making Bacon. Uh, fuck okay. the cop! I want to watch his ass drop as I shoot him in the face with the gap and goes pop. It's concrete. I'm back on the streets. I got my heat. Gonna shoot me some flat little piggy feet. You fat fuck! You think you're so tough? Tuck it on that bullshit while you got me in handcuffs. Let's put them on you, pig, and see how you like it. Then we'll beat your fat ass to death with a knife stick. Wrap my hands around your neck and start shaking. Set your body on fire. It smells good. I'm making bacon. Fire up the skillet. We're making bacon. If you's a pig, your life will get taken. Making bacon. Making bacon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, um, I, I hate cops. You know, you can hear. It's not the original version, but you, you can hear, you know, like I you make, making bacon on my first album, The Dark Ministries. Yeah. Uh, I also put it on I Hate Cops Volume One, and then okay. there is a, and then I made a new version of it, like uh, did a remix version of it, like on uh, I Hate Cops Volume Two, which you, I Hate Cops Volume Two is on Spotify. The whole album. I, I listened to that today. I'll put I'll put all of Volume One on there eventually. It's just gonna take some time. Oh, I mean, you're working on a song a day, <laughs> <laughs> or no, a song a week, right? Well, I don't. Ma- no, I don't. Ma- I, like, a, so, like I said, I released an old one not too long ago. I like last week. I released an old one. Sometimes I release new ones. I got a lot of songs. Like around the end of my addiction, I made a lot of songs that I never released. So oh, okay, I got tons of unreleased stuff to put out. I got old stuff I put out there sometimes. Like. Some of the new stuff, I don't know what I want to do with it yet. So I, I got tons in stock, but then I, you know, sometimes I do make a new song. Oh, okay. I need to make more new songs. Like lately, I haven't, hasn't really been there. I've been busy. I, I got like two jobs right now. Uh, about to get another one that involves some commuting. I, it's, and I never worked. Like, this is my first time working in over a decade i just strictly did music right right i just uh you know you know i mean uh, in the time that's going on having a third job that's not bad that's pretty damn good yeah i well i don't know if i'm gonna keep probably gonna have to let a job go but uh i mean hell (laughs) two jobs are good yeah um yeah i just and you know kind of owe it to this whole fucking COVID bullshit, actually, because uh, now we can't really do shows, so not that I was doing shows, this has actually been kind of cool for me, it's funny to watch the other rappers sweat and shit, like, oh, I can't do shows I'm like, oh, yeah, I never could, because none of you guys would ever fucking put me on anything <laughs> 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 Well, hopefully this changes all that Yeah, so uh, but, yeah, and then I just got some motivation to work, actually, because I need to make some extra money, like, I need to Invested advertising. Right. I mean, I, I was going to release an album a month. I was thinking of doing it, but like when only two people order the album every time, like it's just like, well, <laughs> what's the <laughs> Right. Point? Sometimes you're like, I don't know, maybe I should just well, either not do like, it or just maybe I, I can wait a little bit longer. Those two people will wait. See how brutally honest I am? Most rappers wouldn't admit that their sales were that bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? They're like, no, I got at least two 2,000 of them. Well, Wait. I ain't selling shit right now. Like, uh, you know, and part of it's because I stopped. Like, uh, my addiction got so bad that, like, I mean, it got so bad. I mean, like, uh, yeah, eventually it reached a point where I was not online. I was never going online for years. I was not promoting. Uh, I just stopped paying for internet. I had a bunch of freeloaders hanging out of my house. They weren't paying for shit. Like, I find people outside of my lawn stealing my internet. Like, they'd be outside. Like, uh, it got really bad. Wow. Outside, like, on your lawn, stealing it? Yeah, just, like, just on my yard, stealing it. Yeah, and, like, uh, it was, yeah, it's crazy shit. I don't, I don't even know where to start with it. Like, but it was weird. My music took me really far when I just focused on that, like, for a while. Like, but, you know, and I was just living the rock star lifestyle. I mean, uh, 
My knees are still fucked up from riding around in that driving riding around in that Mustang the gathering and shit, by the way. <laughs> my knees are still fucked up. Like I can't get in the back seats of car. I can't get in the small cars like in the back seats anymore. Like I used to be able to Did you get vertigo. <laughs> Is that what it's called? <laughs> Something like that. Vertigo is usually for the height, though, but it can work in this instance, I guess. It's like, no. Right, like you're a big guy too, so you're like, yeah. I'm like, like, no, I'm not sitting in the back. So check this. Yeah, we took, we yeah, we took this guy's Mustang to the gathering, right? Like they hit us up at the last minute in '07 to ask us, well, ask Bloodshot to play the gathering. Gathering. So he hits me and RM up me and Reaper man up and we had to figure out really quick a month before the gathering how to get there. And the only way we could afford to get there is we flew to Texas and rode with this motherfucker <laughs> in his Ford Mustang. What year was that? I want to say 07. 07 Ford Mustang. Damn, you're no, brand the new. The Mustang was 2000. 2000, okay. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, the Mustang. Yeah, okay. 2000 Ford Mustang. So me and Reaper Man, I mean, we were switching. People have to sit back seats and shit. It was the most, like Reaper Man tells me, he's like, he's never wanted to cry his whole, ever since he was like a little fucking kid, he's never cried about anything. He said the only time he wanted to cry was when he's right in the back of that fucking Mustang. Mustangs have well, no was, room in the back. I don't know how we fit at all. It was uncomfortable even for me. It was a nightmare. Like, <laughs> it was horribly painful. And the way back was even worse. Yeah, absolutely horrible. None of us had any energy. We were all worn out, sleep deprived, because you don't sleep in the gathering. Exactly. <laughs> we had to stop and get a ho I think we even stopped and got a hotel on the way back. I was like, fuck it, I'm stopping and getting a hotel. <laughs> and we had no choice. And <laughs> I don't know how we made our flights. What made you decide to get sober? Uh, that ride that Mustang. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, That'll do it, though. I was, the part where I was about to lose all my gear. Like I was about to lose my banner here. Uh huh. I was about to lose my studio computer, and like, you know, I, I lost. You know, I basically I lost my house. I lost everything, uh, almost everything, and I, my. Uh, my motherfucking stage lights. So, already had a couple of these stolen from me, but I got a whole bunch of stage lighting shit. Oh, nice. LED panels. Yeah. I got ones that move. I got moving heads. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I guess really you get those kind of toys when you get into videography. Yeah, they, 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 they do help with lighting, like especially like if you're doing night shoots. Yeah. So are you doing the, the lighting? So what? So are you, are you like the grip, the lighting? I'm not. I I usually prefer to direct or something, but like oh, I okay. have, I got the equipment, so the grip can use them. Or oh, okay. I, I'll do. Sometimes I do it all. You know. Yeah, I, it's basically you know I have my hard drives and like all my music, my whole life is on these motherfuckers, and you know if something happens to those, I'm probably gonna go suicide by cop or something. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's the way I used to think. I, um, so, you know, I was getting at the point where, yeah, like, I didn't know who to trust anymore. Uh, and when I look back at it, like, my whole life was pretty much a mess <laughs> at youth. Like, like I mean, I would blame things for getting in my way or, uh, you know, or I'd always say I chose my music. Like, sometimes I chose my music career. I, over having a home, sometimes I would like when it came to working on my music or having money to spend on my music or to invest or whatever, I would choose that. But really, like, if I just stopped drinking, I'd probably be able to afford both. Like, <laughs> right. Because, right. I mean, people would tell me, come to me and be like, how do you spend $100 in one night at a bar? I'm like, well, first of all, drinks are expensive. Second of all, I drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, but uh, I mean, uh, yeah, but I mean, some people can drink a lot too and like maintain their business. Like Alan's, Alan and his dad 
uh, go introduce me to Bloodshot. He and his dad, they they drink, and they can drink a lot, and they can still maintain to manage their business, keep it open. You know, some people can do that. Uh, I never really could. Like, I don't even really. So, you know, I got ADD really bad. So my mom warned me of this when she realized I was smoking pot and drinking and brought this up. And uh, I just finally came to the conclusion I should just try for a while how I see how I like having all my brain cells. I was still going to smoke weed at first. Then my, I, you know, I got a sponsor. And then my sponsor's sponsor, who we call a grand sponsor. Right. Basically, kind of suggest he basically told me what he what he felt about marijuana, and he mentioned, well, of course he did. It sounds like he did it back when it was still illegal, but he said he'd go to his dealer's house just to buy pot, and then one day he went over there, and the guy pulled out a bag of meth, and next thing you know, he was on meth, <laughs> 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 which meth is something I ended up getting into over time. Oh, he's, he start, he's, yeah, I don't know. I started the rock star lifestyle kind of just led me to thinking I was invincible. People would give me all kinds of weird drugs for free, and so how long did you do meth? About 10 years. Wow, really? 10 years. Wow. Nobody, I spent about probably anybody even months on it. Yeah? Yeah. That's all, <laughs> like, yeah. I Took stopped getting it for free, so I was like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the hell happened. Yeah, it was just... <laughs> And then eventually I got a house. So even when my career started going down to shitter, I still had a house. So people would still bring it to me for free. It's really embarrassing saying I let myself go like this, but that's what happened. And just kind of, but I mean, I, it didn't take long of you know, once being homeless again, because I actually went through a long period of not being homeless for a while. And the second I was back on the streets again, not too long after that, I figured it out and I just stopped. And uh, I decided, you know, I had to, I had to pass a UA to get back on my DSHS benefits to get my fucking rent paid and shit. Right. So I stopped smoking pot so I could pass a UA and lie my way through this fucking, uh, you know, uh, you know, evaluation, you right. know, drug and alcohol evaluation. And I told myself, I was like, I'm going to quit for a month. I'm going to show all these AA fucks that I can quit for a month. And then I'm going to start again. And they're not going to say shit because I quit for a month. That was my dumb idea. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and then two weeks into it, I just liked myself better personally. Right. Like, yeah. So you just kept going from there? Yep, pretty much. And it's been how long now? Two years and I think about 24 days. 23, 24 days. Congratulations. Thank you. How's that helping with you and your son? I, I, I it took about a, a little over a year before I got to talk to him again. Okay. Because I went a couple years without talking to him because I flipped out and threatened to kill his mom and shit, you know. Sometimes it happens. I mean, <laughs> look at OJ. Yeah. <laughs> Take me and I mix my fucking concrete persona with meth and then it's just <laughs> cuckoo. <laughs> Alcohol and meth, like, boo. Yeah. Um, so, and, you know, so I took some patience, though. Like, you know, I, I didn't get everything I wanted right away. or Right. I kind of just accepted I had no control over that matter and just kind of worked on me. And um, and one day things just kind of fell into place. And first started off, I, I ran into her brother at the studio. Uh-huh. Because, yeah, uh, he's, he's basically a studio baby. Like, <laughs> I met his mom in the studio. Her brother was our manager <laughs> at the time. Wow. Yeah. Remember George? You ever meet George? I don't think I ever met George. Uh, sure. He, he brought us to Texas before. He drove me to Texas before. Uh, anyways. Um, anyways, my baby's mom. I may George. have met George. I don't know. Yeah. He was our pimp manager. <laughs> <laughs> He's Your pimp, pimp manager? Yeah, it's sort of about it's sort of about managers that double up as pimps. Like it's kind of weird. <laughs> like, so he was an actual pimp. Yeah. Like it's hard out here yeah. for a pimp type pimp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was hard out there for him. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, um, I just video chatted 
with my son Thomas. Uh, my fans like to call him Tom Crete, like his mom Tom named him. Yeah, his mom named him Thomas in spite of me, like she just named him without me. And, right. Uh, little did you know that I actually have like one of my great grandfather's name is Thomas. <laughs> ha ha ha. Thomas or something like that, and uh, yeah, and then all my fans started running up to the little baby, like, "What up, Tom Crete? What up, Tom Crete? What up, Tom Crete?" And he start crying. Aah! She's like, his name is Thomas. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, video chatted with him recently. He's 12 now. He's in he's staying in Georgia at the moment. And uh, we, it, our conversations are very awkward, especially that video chat. Like, we're just looking at each other like, wow. Just, just kind of like sitting there without talking. Is that what yeah. you mean by awkward? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I had that with my son for a little while. So I had, I had to go. Like I tried to call him every week, and I just couldn't. I just couldn't do it because we just ended up sitting there talking or watching yeah. TV or something. I'm like, okay, I'm. I'm just gonna let you go. He's like, okay, bye. <laughs> it was like he was like he was waiting on it. <laughs> yeah. And so I started going a couple of weeks without. T- calling then it ended up being a month without calling and that way we'd have something to talk about and now that my son's 20 and we have way much more to, in common Holy shit. right i know 20 years old i, I well, met him when he was a kid right like yeah <laughs> he was a little baby then yeah, i think he was like around seven he was young been that oh, long. Is there a rapper named Forty Ounce? I, I think when I turn forty, I'm gonna change my name to Forty Ounce. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know. Let's like, look that up real quick. Is there? <laughs> hey Google, is there a rapper named Forty Ounce? Here's a summary from the website UrbanDashTrends.com. Bay Area rap legend E40 is probably. Nope. They just brought up E40. You can't hear it. Wow. Wow. Why wouldn't there be a rapper with that name? That'd be funny, too. It would. I, I like and then it. if I rapped about being sober, too? <laughs> 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 or maybe I'll start drinking again. I don't fucking know. Right now, it's it's working for me, though. Staying sober. Well, I mean, hey, I don't. I really don't drink anymore. Really? Like, Yeah, I, I hardly drink at all. I can't say about smoking, but I don't drink anymore. Yeah. I can't say I don't drink anymore, but compared to what I used to, I think I have a drink maybe once every few months. And that's like a drink. Wow. Yeah. I used to drink a lot. Like a lot, a lot. I can tell by the color of your hair. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it gives that little that little redheaded that little redheaded stepchild gone <laughs> I mean I figured me being a redheaded stepchild I might as well own up to the name and just call the podcast that is that what it's oh yeah that is what it's called holy shit yeah <laughs> the redheaded know, stepchild that's podcast that's fucking Here, fuck dope. it might as well own it right yeah Wow. <laughs> it's really good to see you, man. Yeah, same here. I'm glad you fucking I'm glad you're sobered up and gotten better at, at for yourself. You see you see my beards lined up and shit? Like I never did that. <laughs> my hair's all lined up, like what the fuck? Yeah, I need to shave. I'm getting a little scraggly. I mean my it's my beard's getting so long now that I have to wear a mask for work. It's starting to curl up under my ma- for, over my mask, so I yeah. got I got to trim it. I got this little little lip thing that looks like a surfer th- would be on it <laughs> if, it was, if it was water, and just be up there yeah. surfing, hanging tin. Mine's getting there too. Like, I gotta... I'm like, I got to trim it. My wife's like, No, don't trim it. Oh, yeah. Because every time I say trim, she thinks I say sh- I mean shave. 
like shave it. Like, <laughs> no, trim. Trim means just take off the big ends, the big part that doesn't need to be there anymore at the moment. Yeah, one thing about being or doing being an actor, which uh-huh. you know, like when I went to film school and stuff, yeah, if, if I ever had a girlfriend that was kind of like, I like all your hair, and I'd be like, well, I gotta cut it, bitch. <laughs> Not do any, bitch. <laughs> so you went well, to. Gotta go home. <laughs> <laughs> did you say you went to film school? I did. For um, was it worth it? Yes and no. Like, well, the, I mean, the big thing is that I didn't get the damn degree. But even if I did, like, it, I, I don't really blame it for fucking off my music career. But like, basically, my focus <laughs> shifted to it. Like, right. all of a sudden, I fell in love with it, and my focus shifted to it. And then I didn't have time to promote music. Like, I had the money to and everything, but like, I didn't really have the time to sit on the internet and promote. But also, my drug addiction got in the way of that. Really, like. Like if I wasn't buying drugs, I should have been putting the money, the college money I was getting, uh huh, it you know into promotion. You know, like that was the thing I never paid for promotion. So really, no, I I don't really regret what I learned in film school because I needed to learn how to make videos. Like I would not have a music video to this day probably if I didn't do that shit. Like I had to learn how to make music videos, but then I fell in love with it. Next thing I know, I'm directing a thirty page script. How'd that work out? What, uh, what was it about? It's called Family Tide. It was a crime drama. Another uh-huh. student wrote it. Uh, I'd like to put it out one day, but it's like it's the college's project. And I finished it, but they didn't like the version I did. So they. So they not- I, I put out a trailer for it, actually. And it's really, it's actually a really good story, man. It's really good. Like, I fell in love with it. I actually. I'm Is the trailer still out it. there? I pushed to get it made, basically. Like, huh? Is the trailer still out there? Yeah, it's on my YouTube channel. Okay, I'll have to look at it then. You'll have to find it. It says this fall, but I mean, that was like fucking five falls ago. <laughs> hey, man, sometimes movies happen like that. Sometimes uh, they so get made and they just get tossed into the back and never seen again. Yeah, I just got my. Uh, I just kind of got my computer and my hard drives running again. I don't know for how long, but like, I just got all my old footage for this movie. I started making, like, I was trying to make a full link called Mark of a Beast. It's probably not going to be a full link now. We never really did finish it, but I'm going to try and put it together enough to, like, tell us, tell the story. Uh-huh. But it's also an album that I recorded years ago. And the shit's been lost because shortly after I got clean, my computer crapped out on me and I just, my brain was so fucked at the at the time and I was so focused on fixing myself that I just couldn't deal with it. Right. So I've been, I finally started taking it to the shop like, like yesterday, day before yesterday, like the lab, this week I started taking it to the shop, found out my hard drives aren't as bad as I thought they were. They're just some things wrong with the computer kind of. All right, man. So is there anything you want to plug? I don't really have any release dates or nothing. I'm like, I'm really terrible. Like I'm still getting used to like, doing this music shit and not being loaded. Yeah, but I got a really dark album called uh, Kill the Thought that I'm hopefully maybe releasing early September. I'd like to do it. Try to think about releasing something around, but... but And you got your videos on your YouTube? Yep, youtube.com backslash concrete official. The word concrete and official, no hyphen or nothing. YouTube.com backslash concrete official. Uh, got tons of music videos, tons of short films. Uh, I got my short film Smiles on there. Don't Talk, Just Smile, which I also doubled up. It's also, I made a music video out of that short film. It's called Daddy Issues. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so uh, there's two versions you can watch. It's basically a silent film. Oh, okay. This music playing in the background. Okay, and, gotcha. Uh, yeah, it is really brilliant how I made it because it was a school project. Don't talk, just smile. It's, it's actually a prequel to Smiles. And, oh, okay. Uh, it's a character I created. It was actually originally a character I created in a voice acting class. Like, I was coming up with my own version of the Joker, and then I just decided to kind of make it my own character. 
like he uh yeah uh he he's you know, like the guy is basically just a maniac that uh just keeps a fake smile on his face at all times so you know nobody knows what's gonna happen uh, okay what kind of camera yeah. do you use to film it uh, the original smiles was filmed uh, with my uh well it was most of it was filmed with uh you know the 10 minute version the, the original smiles I also have a one minute version for social media like <laughs> but the 10 minute version that's on YouTube it was shot with a black magic camera actually like fucking what do you think of that four thousand dollar camera it's, it's nice it's cool it's a lot of memory like like it I forget what it does but like it's a lot of memory in every frame. Like it, it, it fucking saves every fucking frame. I, I don't know. It's I forget what all it does, but it was an awesome camera. You know, shot in 4K or whatever, and uh, and then I just you can do whatever you want with it, basically. Like, right? Do you edit? The that's footage? the camera. It makes everything dull, so you can color correct the fuck out of it. Right. Oh, so it shoots in log. Yeah, like like the colors are very bland when you fucking originally record it. And you can just do right. You so, do you do the editing on it, the video editing? Yep. What do you use? Uh, Adobe Premiere. And I After also Effects. Use, I also use Pinnacle. Uh, like like well, yeah, After Effects. Uh, I've been using Pinnacle uh, lately. Like while while my computer was down for the count, I had to use some program my friend gave me called Pinnacle, right. and that's what i've been doing like i've been editing my last few music videos with uh, <laughs> i use okay. adobe edition for my recording and mixing and freddy loops and reason for beats when i do make beats i might start making beats again my order a keyboard and start trying to get back into that hard to say right now mm -hmm. I, okay I love doing what I do. Well, there you go. You love doing what you do. You're staying clean, being healthy. It's kind of hard doing it. Kid. Kid. It's gonna oddly, be. <laughs> but what was that? It's, you know, it just takes some time and patience. Basically, doing the shit sober. Like uh, oh, yeah. sometimes it's cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. I made some pretty good stuff though, sober too. And uh, oh, Eminem's doing it somehow, so shit. Well, he learned from Dre. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good mentor to learn from. I'm sure you'd be doing the same thing, too, if you learned from Dre. <laughs> Maybe I should. <laughs> it's never too late. Never too late. But yeah, I love my life today. It's just way better, way more positive people. Like, I mean, I, I had a, you know, I had a little blemish of my criminal record, like that this employer wanted to know more about. And I got like five letters of recommendation in like a two day period. I got five people to write letters of recommendation. That's good. I, I didn't even try that hard. I just got good people in my corner, like not backstabbers anymore. Like, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, once you get clean, some things you notice are, are some of the hard things you don't want, ever want to see. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, uh, uh, a friend of mine I've known since high school uh, just died. He got uh, – the cops shot him. Oh, Looks like the cops yeah, yeah. murdered him. Sounds like – but, like, regardless if he – you know, the thing is, if he wasn't out – pretty sure that – I, I don't even know. I have a feeling that, you know, his addiction got the best of him for a while and it kind of led up to it, but I could be wrong. But uh, It's a bad thing. But, I mean, he's been in and out of addiction regardless, so he had a history on him. Right. You know, so, uh, and it sucks because I remember that story I was telling you about, and, like, I was watching my two friends freestyle. Right. Uh, you know, watching my two friends freestyle, and I'm like, I could do that too. This guy was one. His name was David Pruitt, and he was one of them. And this just happened two nights ago. I was oh, actually, I was actually right around the corner at a meeting 
outside of a you know outside of a house an Oxford house like at an you know at an AA slash NA meeting type meeting and I remember having to go the other way because somebody said that that road was blocked off so I had to go find another way around that road and I didn't know it was my friend there that was dead so how'd you find out People posted on Facebook the next day. Oh, wow. And looking I, up the article and realizing it happened on Bethel Road. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I think I drove by him like he was sitting on the side of the road. And I drove by him like, you know, so I got this thing like, oh, maybe, I, you know, if I did fucking picked him up or whatever. But like, he was one of those people that I saw freestyling. Him, my other best friend, Brian Salway, like, they were just, you know, they were freestyling while we were walking down the street beatboxing for each other and shit and i'm just like oh well, fuck i could do that too so well it still sucks that a friend your friend lost his life it's, it really does suck i mean totally whether it be because of the drugs or not i mean it, a life lost is a life lost yeah because uh, just like you he could have gotten sober yeah and his and life he, did, turned he, actually around. Got, he actually would sober up a lot he'd do really good for a while He'd go into business for himself. He'd do contracting and work for a while. And then he'd just fall off for a while and he'd come back and do it. He was actually, I just found out that he was actually a millionaire. His dad just wouldn't let him touch the money. Oh, okay. The money that was left to him. So, I mean, could have so been it was kind of like a trust fund. Yeah, something like that. Like to be a certain age before fund. you can get it. Or, yeah, he was old enough. Well, you just, uh, I just, somebody, you know, his family just had power over the money. His grandfather died, left him the money, and oh, he couldn't okay. get it. That had to fuck with his head. That's one thing they say, too, is like, you better buy a suit. If you get sober, you better buy a suit because you're going to go to a lot of funerals. And they aren't playing. I might have to actually buy a suit pretty soon because, yeah, you, you just watch the people that, you know, you watch a lot of the people that just stay out there die, and, and they die from random stuff. Sometimes it's overdoses. Sometimes it's just bullshit that happens. Right. They're around getting car wrecks or get shot by somebody. I mean, yeah, it's going to happen, and unfortunately, that's the sad part. You, you just never know who it's going to be. Good old depressing stories. But so, how about them yeah. cowboys? <laughs> I don't watch sports, but no. man, I got these old fucking albums. I got this old footage. Uh, so the first time in a minute that I've actually been motivated to put some fucking music shit together. Or, you know, Get on it. Make some fucking films and stuff. Around Halloween is what I want to bring out, Mark of the Beast, like around October. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh -huh. If things work out, I might push it back a little bit. But... um. Hopefully within the next month or so, or at least get that Kill the Thought album out, because that's some good, dark shit. And got another album called Black Ridgeway I'm working on. <laughs> uh, Black Ridgeway? Black Ridgeway. Another Is one of my nicknames. Another uh, nickname? Yeah. Dare I ask? You know, uh, one of our famous serial killers out here, Gary Ridgeway. Uh, I just came up with this idea of a black guy to kill prostitutes who called himself Black Ridgeway. <laughs> I don't fucking... Kind of like Jack the Ripper. Yeah, I was I was on a lot of drugs when I came up with it. Yeah. Um, dude, Black Ridgeway was actually it's supposed to be a metal band. I was going to put together this evil metal band, but we were all on drugs and it didn't work out. Yeah, the musicians were just like Rob Man. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, and they all sucked. Like uh, that happens I too. With, I came up with this way to tune guitars. I call it the Key of Evil. Uh -huh. Where I I would, you know, you know how usually when they want to make their guitar sound darker, they would take the the low E string and they change it, right? You know, drop D or whatever. I would keep the E the same, and I'd fuck up all the other strings. <laughs> <laughs> I put all the other strings out of tune. I have a way I do it. Like I have a whole system. Like another thing about turning on this computer, I got the document that I made where I actually recorded how the guitar was supposed to be tuned <laughs> okay all right well i'm on i think that's about it cool cool so man, fucking again, good talking to you, man. nice talking to you tell them where they can see your stuff catch you out catch you online wherever 
Oh, my personal Facebook is facebook.com backslash the dark minister. Goes by my real name, Aaron Williams, which is now becoming like a bigger name than concrete right now, it seems like. <laughs> which is okay. I was 19 years old. 19, 20 years old when we came up with that name. But, uh, yeah, but you can catch, uh, catch me on Twitter. It's con underscore creep. I believe uh, it's, oh yeah um, sorry uh, concrete underscore scumbag on Instagram concrete underscore scumbag on Instagram okay. and yeah once again youtube.com backslash concrete official okay and we'll also put that in the description below so people can check that out too alright man take it easy alright good talking to you nice talking to you yeah! have a good one well, I hope you enjoyed the interview. If you did, hit that little subscribe button back there. Don't forget that little bell thing that they got. That way you're notified for whenever we get a new episode, which comes out every Monday. Don't forget to leave a message. Don't forget to leave a comment. Also, you can go to iTunes, and subscribe, and leave a comment there. You can find us on Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Oh, yeah, we got this thing called Instagram. I'm on that, too. You can find me at IamTRSP. Also, same ha name handle on Twitter. Go follow me there, also. Leave me an email at redheadedstepchild at gmail.com. That's redheadedstepchild at gmail.com. Know thee. Don't forget the audio version has a special intro and outro audio part only. I look forward to seeing you again. Talk to you next week.